Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The painful death of the forgotten medieval boy king. One of the most shocking events of the medieval period was the Princes in the Tower mystery. Edward IV died rather suddenly, and following this, plans were made to crown his eldest son Edward, as Edward V, the new King of England. There were great plans for the young king who would spearhead the House of York's efforts to defeat the House of Lancaster once and for all during the Wars of the Roses. Edward V was just around the age of 12 when he would have been crowned king, and along with his brother, Richard of Shrewsbury, the Duke of York, the boys were held inside the Tower of London. This was normal for kings, as they would await for their coronation at the Tower, before then travelling to Westminster Abbey for their crowning, but Edward V would never be crowned. The man who was supposed to protect him, Richard, the Duke of Gloucester, his uncle, would launch a scathing triad against the two boys, which resulted in the pair being declared illegitimate. Following this, Richard then was crowned Richard III, and the boy's uncle took the crown himself, and many across England believed he was a usurper. However, the boys inside the Tower of London were now prisoners, and as time went on, the pair disappeared from view, which concerned many. Today, it's considered that the pair were murdered and killed in their sleep. But what is the story behind this? Now, Edward V was born on the 2nd of November 1470, and his father was Edward IV, and his mother was Elizabeth Woodville. He was considered the great hope behind the House of York, and his mother had sought sanctuary at Chatching Gates, which was the medieval house belonging to the Abbey of Westminster, that was joined to Westminster Abbey. She did this as she sheltered from Lancastrians, who had briefly deposed her husband, the Yorkist King Edward IV, and Edward V's father. The boy was declared the Prince of Wales in the June of 1471, after his father gained his throne back. And then, in 1473, the Council of Wales and the Marshes were created and the young prince was made a nominal president of the Council of the Marshes. With this, it would be expected later in life that he would help the governing of Wales and the Marshes for England. But in 1479, his father then gave his son the earldom of Pembroke, so there was great hopes for the future King Edward V, and he was watched over closely by the Queen's brother, Anthony Woodville, who was the second Earl Rivers. He was a very learned man and was important in the establishment of the household that would bring up the future king. Edward IV instructed what would happen for his son's upbringing and it was said he would arise every morning at a convenient hour according to his age and his day would begin with religious study and mass, which he would have without interruption. Following his breakfast, he was then educated with virtuous learning and the best education that medieval England could offer. Dinner was then served at ten o'clock, and he would then read stories in which aimed to inspire him in the values of honour, virtue and wisdom. The king was keen to ensure that his son and heir was raised right, and Earl Rivers was placed in charge to make sure that any person with any reputation which was negative was no way near Edward's education. After further learning, the prince took part in sports and activities, and he then went to bed at nine o'clock. It was said by an Italian ambassador that, in word and deed, he gave so many proofs of his liberal education, of polite, nay, rather scholarly, attainments for beyond his age, his special knowledge of literature enabled him to discourse elegantly, to understand fully, and to disclaim most excellently from any work, whether the verse or prose that come into his hands, unless it were from the more abstruse authors. He had such dignity in his whole person, and in his face such charm, that however much they might gaze, he never wearied the eyes of beholders. But as with any heir to the throne, the question of marriage was a prominent one, and Edward IV planned a marriage that would secure European alliances for his son. Prince Edward was betrothed to the four-year-old heir to Francis II, the Duke of Brittany's titles and it was said that the pair would be married when they were old enough, but Anne later married Maximilian I, the Holy Roman Emperor, instead. 
However, when the prince was in his twelfth year of life, on the 14th of April 1483, he received news that his father had died five days before. Edward IV was said that his brother Richard the Duke of Gloucester would act as the protector during his son's early life until he became of age to rule independently. The new king left Ludlow Castle on the 14th of April for the coronation, and Richard left York a day earlier, and the pair had planned to meet at Northampton and travel to London together. When Richard got to Northampton, Edward had already reached Stony Stratford, and was here where a rather bizarre meeting took place. On the night of the 29th, Richard dined with Edward's half-brother Richard Grey and Earl Rivers, and then Richard arrested them, and they were sent north. Richard then had them executed. But then he took possession of the king, and then travelled to London. On the 19th of May 1483, Edward V had reached the Tower of London, and the new king took up residence here. And then on the 16th of June, he was joined by his younger brother Richard of Shrewsbury, the Duke of York. An immediate coronation was planned by ruling council. However, Richard III delayed the coronation and launched a shocking attack on the boys inside the Tower of London. He claimed they were Ill illegitimate due to the fact Edward IV, their father, had already been betrothed to another woman, and with this he claimed that the children of his marriage to Elizabeth Woodville, as in the two boys inside the Tower of London, and the king, were in fact illegitimate. With this, he then managed to convince others of this, and he then ascended to the throne himself, being crowned King Richard III. But the story got very dark for Edward V, the king who was never actually crowned. He and his brother were held inside the Tower of London still, and it was clear that the pair were now imprisoned. It was written by Dominic Manici, an Italian friar, that the boys were taken into the inner apartments of the tower and were seen less and less until they disappeared altogether. It was said that Edward V was visited regularly by a doctor and that Edward was like a victim prepared for sacrifice and he sought remission of his sins by daily confession and penance because he believed death was facing him. With this it's interesting to consider that the boy king may have believed he was going to be killed. The final reports of Edward V and his brother's existence in that that they were seen playing in the grounds of the Tower of London shortly after Richard had joined his brother, but there was no recorded sightings of, of them following the summer of 1483. There was allegedly a rescue attempt to spring them from the Tower launched, but this failed. But then the pair simply disappeared. Most historians consider that the princes were most probably murdered around the end of September 1483 by either Richard III or men who were sent by Richard to kill the two boys. The problem was for Richard that having his two nephews alive was dangerous for him, as many believed he was a usurper, and whilst they were alive, they served as a threat to the kingship. It's believed that a rebellion launched against Richard III and was aimed to rescue Edward V and his brother from the tower. However, other high-marking nobles, such as the Duke of Buckingham, it's believed, had learned that the princes in the tower were dead. There is no direct evidence that states the princes were murdered, and the only narrative from the time that exists is from the Italian friar. But rumours quickly spread that the king-to-be, Edward V, was murdered at the hands of his uncle. This was one of the accusations levelled against the king during Henry Tudor's campaign to defeat Richard III, whom he deemed was a brutal usurper and a regicide who organised the killing of the rightful king. But on the 17th of July 1674, workmen who were conducting remodelling work inside the White Tower, the oldest part of the Tower of London, discovered a wooden box hidden beneath the staircase leading to the chapel. Inside this box were the remains of two small humans, and the staircase alluded to the fact that this was where the boys had been dumped after being killed. The bones were placed in an urn on the orders of King Charles and were interred in Westminster Abbey. A monument to the boys which contains the bones states, Here lies the relics of Edward V, King of England, and Richard, Duke of York, these brothers being confined in the Tower of London, and there stifled with pillows, were privately and meanly buried by the order of their perfidious uncle Richard the usurper. Their bones, long inquired after and wished for, 
after 191 years in the rubbish of the stairs, those lately leading to the Chapel of the White Tower, were on the 17th day of July AD 1674 by undoubted proofs discovered being buried deep in that place. Charles II, a most compassionate king, pitying their severe fate, ordered these unhappy princes to be laid amongst the monuments of their predecessors, AD 1678, in the thirtieth year of his reign. In 1933, the bones were examined and it was confirmed that the remains belonged to two children and were around the correct age for the princes. One of the skeletons was larger than the other and a number of the bones were broken and were missing. There have been calls for these bones to be DNA tested, but this has not yet occurred. But Edward V was the 12-year-old King of England, whose fate today remains a mystery. It's presumed he was brutally murdered alongside his brother, and he was deposed by his uncle who became King Richard III and was known for being one of England's most notorious and brutal monarchs. What is interesting is the stories regarding Richard III and his death, and brutal did seem to be true, including following the discovery of the remains of Shakespearean thought to be myths regarding his scoliosis and curvature of the spine. This was proven true, so is one more correct thing about Richard III that he murdered his nephews and seized the throne for himself. It certainly is a possibility. Thank you for watching and support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.